Okay, so in part six, what we're going to do is we're actually going to rewrite some code that we wrote in part five to make it more efficient. Um, and we'll write our code more efficiently from here on out. But by the end of part five, you should still be able to apply effects using your sliders, but you'll be able to do it a lot more elegantly. So the first thing that I want you to do is you're actually going to comment out the code that you have created that defines a variable um, that gets each of the sliders and then also calls the change slider handler um, function. So to comment out multiple lines of code in JavaScript, it, the syntax is the same as CSS. You're going to say forward slash star and then your closing one will be star forward slash. And you'll see that just those lines of code are grayed out. Awesome. We're not commenting out our change slider handler function because we actually are still going to use this code. But we're going to write about three lines of code that could replace each of these eight lines. And if you have more than four sliders, this is going to save you even more time, which is going to be awesome. So um, the next thing that you're going to do is we're going to use the query selector all method, which if you remember from your read to learn allows you to get uh, a list of HTML elements that all have a certain CSS selector. So for us, we want to get each of the different sliders and we're going to store them into one variable or one array named ranges. And this is going to allow us to use the for each method in a couple of steps. So let's go ahead and use the query selector all method to get each of the sliders by input type equals range. So we'll start out by saying bar ranges equals document dot query selector all saying get all of the elements in the HTML document that have input type equals range and then we want a semicolon. Let's go ahead and look at our index.html file to see what uh, HTML elements that will get. So if we look at each of our sliders, they have their input tag first of all, but they also have type equals range. The reason we can't just use the HTML element of input is because we also have an input for file loading button, so we need to be more specific. Um, but each of the sliders all have the input type equals range. So we can use that to get just the sliders and we're storing them inside of this variable named ranges. All right, once you've done that, go ahead and save your changes. The next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna use the for each method or the for each loop on ranges. And we will call our change adjust or our change slider handler function um, for the range when it changes. Okay, so to do this, we'll say, ranges dot for oops, for each parenthesis function range after the closing parenthesis for range you're going to say opening curly bracket and then you have a closing curly bracket that's going to hit enter a couple of times at the end of my closing parenthesis I'm going to go ahead and add my semicolon now so I don't forget to do it and so we're calling this for each method on ranges and we're going to say that when one of the ranges change or one of the range changes, um, so whenever a slider changes, then we want to call change adjustment handler. And this is basically replacing each of these four lines of code that call change slider handler on our different sliders. Okay. So we'll say range dot on change equals change slider handler function. And this should allow us to call the change slider handler function on each of the different um, sliders. So we can go ahead and test this out and see if it works. Refresh and go ahead and choose one of my pictures. You can see that brightness works, vibrance works, hue works, gamma works. And so just these three short lines of code replaced all of these different lines of code. So you can either leave this commented out or you can go ahead and delete it. It's up to you. You should also add at least two new comments that describe what you've just coded. And that's part six.